Coach, a routine question. I mean, you had a chance to review the film. What were your impressions of how the team played on Saturday? Well, I thought we played together pretty good at times. I thought when we didn't play together, it showed. I thought that, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, we played fast for the most part, which I uh, thought was good as far as the tempo. And then, um, you know, we got plenty of work to do, but I think we got a week better, so that part was good. Whenever Dollar Bill went down, uh, brought in a couple of different left tackles. The second time around, you had Nick Jones in there at left tackle, and Stephen Lasoya was in there as well. How did you feel like they did on the left side of the line? And also, do you feel like Nick Jones has worked himself into being a reliable guy if you need him there on the left side? <clears throat> well, he's, Nick's been on the left side for a while. I mean, he's uh, you know plays guard and tackle both, so he's versatile and he's got really good feet. And then. <clears throat> you know, we try to roll, um, you know, if we can, about eight guys. So, you know, and Nick's uh, been one of the eight from the beginning. Uh, and then and then Lasoy, of course, has emerged as camp went on. Mike, uh, A&M been incredibly good defensively this year. I think they give up like 11 points per game or something. What sticks out to you the most about them uh, defensively? Uh, just they're you know big, they're big lanky guys and they run well you know they you know once they see the ball they do a good job chasing the ball really I mean they're athletic and they they run to the ball. Mike, I know you've said in the past that you hate punting, but you know George and Archer have put up some pretty impressive numbers so far. <coughs> you know as you get into SEC play, these games get tighter, field position matters. How important you know is it to have those two guys putting up that kind of production? I thought they punted really well, and also if you can stick it on the six-inch line every time, that'd be good. You know, I think that that's what I think they ought to do. No matter how far out we are, they ought to stick it on the six-inch line, and we'd be in good shape. Yep. <clears throat> Going off of that, your punt and kick return game so far is one of the best in the country. What have you seen from that unit as a whole, as well as from two Xavion and those guys in particular? I think we're improving. I think we're getting better. I think we done a pretty good job blocking it if we you know it's uh you know it's, for the most part we just got to be disciplined on our blocks things like that i think those two guys are explosive i also think they're kind of emerging and getting better and better Steve. coach kind of back to the offensive line question when it comes to like substitutions and rotations and things like that obviously it's your program but how much autonomy do you give the assistant coaches to make those decisions and you know, is, is, is it kind of relate to a guy going down or is it predetermined how do you kind of coordinate when it comes to like substitution patterns uh quite a bit uh, quite a bit a lot of it's kind of apparent as you go through camp and practice i mean uh, for the most part everybody's on the same page you know you're seeing the same film and the same things um and then well then position coach wise I mean you're kind of gauging you know who's doing what and who's uh, you know who's in what kind of condition and so then you operate from there who's fresh who needs a break and then uh, but you do try to establish a rotation and those are hard to establish uh, especially with the offensive line where continuity is such an important thing uh, but uh, you know, you try to develop. I mean, everybody tries to develop too deep. I don't know anybody that's really got a true too deep. I never have. I've tried to. Um, <clears throat> but if you can get uh, eight that are really reliable, you know, uh, you'd, you'd like at least that. Mike, after the LSU game, you, you said it wasn't Will's best outing, but to see him perform the way that he did kind of on Saturday and looking back on the film, how, how nice was it to kind of see him bounce back in that way, and, and how did you kind of see him turn the page? Uh, I thought he improved. I thought he improved, and I thought – but, you know, I thought the guys around him <clears throat> improved too, and that's one thing tough with a, <clears throat> a quarterback is what they do, I mean, is they elevate and uh, the guys around them and – uh, the better those guys play, the better the quarterback looks. So it all goes kind of hand in hand. Kind of the follow-up there on Will. You know, last year that game at A&M was one where, at least nationally, he kind of started to, to garner some attention. What do you remember from you know, that week and, and that game you know, for him to be able to handle that level of opponent in, in that environment um, as a true sophomore? You know, he just kind of focused on his job. That was the good thing. I mean, he uh, didn't make too much out of it, just focused on uh, kind of the next play in his job. And I thought, 
you know, just the discipline to do that was good. And, you know, because it was a place where communication's tough because it's really loud. And then, uh, you know, and I thought the calmer he played, the calmer our, our offensive unit played. And it was a good game. We played, uh, we played really hard, but we played pretty sharp, too. Statistically, the defense has done a pretty good job limiting big plays so far. How happy are you with their performance in that area this year? Nah, they're doing some good. They're like all of them, everybody on our team. I mean, you know, we can be a lot better, but we're off to a decent start, I think. <clears throat> Went up against DJ Durkin last year at Ole Miss. He's at A&M this year. What's that defense look like on film? For the first few games at A and M, yeah, just pretty similar. You know, they a lot of zone. Uh, they they like a lot of zone. They'll just change the front some, and then you know, just it's very fundamental, which I think is a strength. You know, I think it's uh, that's a strength when they're very fundamental and they've decided what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. So, John. Jimbo Fisher is a guy that's had a lot of success and where he's been, and even this year after the <coughs> loss, I mean, they've rebounded well. What do you think makes him a, a good coach, and what's your relationship kind of like with him? I've known him for a long time, and then, of course, he's, uh, you know, he's just always, uh, uh, he's been at it for a long time, you know, and uh, worked at it a long time, and uh, and has always been an offensive guy. So, yeah, he, uh, uh, you know, really just a lot of experience, good experience, and is just, kind of built on his career, you know. <clears throat> you and uh, I guess Coach McBath both have experience in the past with Texas A&M uh, when you were at Texas Tech. And I know Coach McBath's a guy that has now played for you and coached for you. I guess kind of a two-part question with Coach McBath. Just what was he like as a player uh, for you? And just uh, I guess what kind of made you want him to be a part of your staffs as you've gone along here as a head coach? Well, he was a confident guy, an intense guy. Um, <clears throat> you know, he's kind of a powerfully built guy, but he could run. He's always been fast. And then, uh, and uh, you know, there's DBs out there playing that probably aren't as good as he is right now. And then, um, so, you know, I thought that, you know, just first of all, he's a good player. He's also a very even-tempered guy that, you know, was smart and kind of a student of football. and. And he was a really good player, and then of course went on to the NFL and and did real well there. And then, uh, but you know, just he's always been uh, very stable, very common sense, very clear. You know, uh, demanding when he had to be, but also uh, could build guys up and just a, a really good coach. And as a you know, as a player, you knew he was going to be a pretty good coach, but you also knew that he wasn't going to be done playing after college either. So. So that's how it unfolded. He's one of those guys where it kind of unfolded how you thought it would. Coach, when you were at Tech, you and A&M had some legendary games there. And there's a lot of people there. I before they remember your time there. What are your thoughts maybe about that fan base and just kind of about that program historically? Oh, A&M? Well, that's a great place to play. The fans are fantastic because the fans are truly committed. I mean, as far as around the country, I mean, for the A&M fans are truly committed. So. It's always great to play in front of people that, you know, where they feel like it's uh, very important, what's happening is very important to them. And of course, Kyle Field's a great place to play and always an exciting place to play. And it's just a great challenge to go uh, play at uh, Texas A&M. And uh, uh, of course, they hated us for years. I never felt like I really hated them. They, I'm sure they hated me, but um, which was fine because I, you know, uh, your liking me is not mutually exclusive to me liking you. You know, if anything, maybe it helps. And then, um, but uh, no, it was, uh, they were great games and it was fun. And it was fun to play uh, Texas A&M and what a great setting to play. And uh, and yeah, no, it was, they were intense games and it was always intense. Coach, uh, momentum from one game to the next, if you play well, does it necessarily carry over the next game, or does each game have an identity of its own, and you just have to prepare that way? Uh, kind of both. I mean, it's I've always thought kind of the more work you get done one game, uh, then you can uh, build on it even more than next, and it definitely, uh, momentum does kind of, 
uh, help propel you a little bit, but also, you know, every game is uh, kind of a separate event and a separate week of preparation and a separate segment of the year and one that needs to be maximized. And, if, you know, if you don't maximize it, you're going to get behind. And the more you do maximize it, the better you're going to be from uh, as you grow from one week to the next. Kind of along those lines, your next four opponents are, are ranked opponents. Has this team maybe being a bit more experienced as one of the ones in the past that you've had here, they kind of learned to not look ahead and, and see, you know, those those three games after this one uh, that loom? Uh, I think. I mean, we kind of talk about the day's practice and that sort of thing. And, you know, our schedule, especially what's coming up, would be pretty tough to look ahead, you know. Um, uh, and, you know, we've got some guys, some are smarter than others, but it would be monumentally stupid to look ahead on anybody, you know. John. Mike, uh, <coughs> you saw playing a and last week, your next two opponents. Were, were you watching that game live, and what would you, would you kind of think of that one and the craziness that ended? Uh, I didn't watch it live, watched bits and pieces of it. Um, we then, of course, had watched it on film all day yesterday, so. Anything else? All right. All right. Appreciate it.